Hey, and welcome back. So at the moment, our Marine is holding a rifle, and when we press the left mouse button or the right trigger of the gamepad, we play a muzzle flash particle effect on the end of the weapon. Now inside our Marine Blueprint, we have our fire weapon action event that handles this. When we press the left mouse button or the right trigger, we execute our start firing weapon function, or if we release, we execute the stop firing weapon function. And these functions just basically activate or deactivate our muzzle flash particle. Now we're going to add some code to these functions to make the weapon feel more believable. We're going to be adding some audio. If we come back to the content browser, we can find the sounds folder and there's quite a lot of audio that we can make use of in this project. We have a folder that contains the weapon sounds underneath the weapon assault rifle folder. We can come inside the stereo subfolder and inside here we have a bunch of audio assets. You'll notice that there's two different types of icons. The first two we see here are sound cues. We'll be coming back to these shortly. And the rest of all of these assets are sound waves. These are basically just the raw audio files. And we can preview a sound wave by hovering over an asset and clicking the play button here. So we have some single shot sounds, but we also have some weapon looping sounds. Now we're going to play a weapon looping sound just like how we spawn a looping particle effect. We're going to play it as soon as we hold down the right trigger or press the left mouse button. Then we're going to stop playing it when we release. But before we get to this, we're going to create our own sound cue. Sound cues are pretty much the audio equivalent of blueprints. They allow us to add a little bit of behavior to not just to one sound, but to multiple sounds at once. For example, a sound cue can combine and randomize multiple sounds, and we can even vary the pitch for each sound. There's lots of little nifty things we can do. Let's take a look at setting up a sound cue for our looping weapon fire sounds. Inside this folder, we're going to right click to create a new asset. We're going to come to sounds and then sound cue. Let's give this a name like rifle fire loop underscore cue. Let's double click on this to open it up. We can see we have an output. We don't have any sounds in here though. To get sounds inside our sound cue, we can just pull the tab off so we can see the content browser at the same time. And we can find our looping fire sounds. We can select one, then hold down left shift and then multi-select the different sounds. And we can click and drag them in. And we can maximize the cue editor. Now with our sounds in here, we can plug one of them into the output. And that's how we basically connect a sound to the sound cue. As soon as we hit play, it's just gonna play that sound. But what about multiple sounds? Well, let's break the link here. We can hold down left alt and left click, just like in blueprints. And with all of these sounds selected, we can right click and we can add some nodes here. If we come down, we can call the random node and we can see that it automatically connects all three of these nodes to this random node. This means if we connect this to the output, anytime we press play, it's gonna randomize which sound plays. But we can also drag out from the random output here and we can call the modulator. Let's plug in the modulator to the output. You might not notice any difference here, but if you select the modulator, we can see that we can randomize the minimum pitch and the maximum pitch, and we can also randomize the volume. So if we set the pitch higher, it's going to sound like our weapon has a higher fire rate. So I'm gonna set my minimum pitch and my maximum pitch to 1.2 to make it sound like the weapon has a higher fire rate. So how do we know if a sound is actually looping? Because you'll notice if we come and hit play at the moment, our weapon actually stops firing, even though it says it's a loop. So to make it looping, we can select all of the sound waves and we can just simply check the looping checkbox. And now it will actually keep looping. Okay, so this is our cue now set up. Let's close it. And now we have our rifle fire loop cue. Now we want to call this or play it from our start firing weapon within our Marine. So how do we go about that? Well, we're going to right click and we're going to spawn the sound. So if we type in spawn sound, there's different functions that we can call. We can spawn sounds attached to the weapon or at a location. And while these would be good, from a top-down perspective, we don't actually really need to do this. We can just spawn the sound 2D. This means that the sound isn't going to be spatialized in the world, but this is fine for our weapon firing sound. Let's hook this up to the start firing weapon. Let's choose our sound cue, which was rifle fire loop. We have a return value for the sound. 
what we can do is store this as a variable. This can be our weapon fire sound. So as soon as we start firing our weapon, we spawn a sound, and this is actually a component. If we hover over the return value, we can see it's an audio component. We want to stop and destroy this audio component whenever we stop firing this weapon. So in stop firing weapon, we can grab the weapon fire sound that we just stored, and we can drag this out, and we can call stop. Now this is going to stop the audio components from playing, but usually we would have to destroy the component. But we don't actually have to destroy the component here, we can just call stop. We can hook it up to the execution pin, and let's come back to start firing weapon. We can see that if we expand the spawn sound 2D node, we can see we have this auto destroy checkbox. And it tells us that when it tells us that if this is checked, the sound will automatically be cleaned up. Basically, it will destroy the component whenever the sound stops playing. This is why we don't have to call destroy components, because whenever we call stop, the component will automatically be destroyed from the world. So we don't actually need to call destroy component. It's fine just to call stop. Now let's come back to our level and hit play. So when we start firing, we play the weapon fire sound, and when we stop firing, it stops playing the sound, but it sounds a bit weird when we stop firing. Inside this folder, we have these shot end sounds, which sound pretty good whenever we stop firing the weapon. So we're going to spawn these whenever we call our stop firing weapon function, but I'm gonna challenge you to set this up. Create a new sound cue called rifle fire end cue. Make use of the rifle end shot sound waves. You might want to make sure that you match the pitch of your looping fire sound, but you won't need to loop these end shots. And the big step to this is to make sure that you spawn this new sound cue whenever you stop firing. So pause here to set this up and then we can wrap up this lesson. Okay, so I've created a new sound cue that makes use of these end shot fire sounds. So we're going to spawn this rifle fire end whenever we stop firing our weapon. So inside the stop firing weapon function within the marine blueprint, we are going to right click and call spawn sound. We're going to spawn the sound in 2D space. Let's hook this up to the execution pin here and let's just call our new fire end sound cue. And remember, we don't need to destroy it or anything because it auto destroys automatically. Awesome, so we can hit compile and save. Let's just come back to the event graph to double check everything. So whenever fire weapon is pressed, we execute our start firing weapon function, which spawns our muzzle flash particle effect, and then we spawn the looping weapon sound. And we store this as a variable, which helps us when we stop firing the weapon. Now let's come to the stop firing weapon function. This executes when we release the left mouse button or the right trigger of the gamepad. We simply stop the muzzle flash from spawning and we stop our looping rifle weapon sound and then we spawn the end shot sound. Now let's come back to our level and hit play to hear what this sounds like. So it's much more convincing that we're firing a weapon now you now know how to create sound cues and spawn non-spatialized audio, and we'll be taking a look at spawning spatialized audio later on, but for now, our weapon is pretty much there. We can't really do too much more until we have our aliens running around after us trying to attack us. Before we get to them, we're going to create the player's HUD. So once you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson, where we're going to take our first look at Unreal Motion Graphics. Hey, and welcome to this lesson where we're going to start designing a HUD for our player character so we can see things like how much health he has and how many aliens he's killed. So to create our HUD, we're going to be using Unreal Motion Graphics. Unreal Motion Graphics is Unreal's user interface designer. It allows us to create things called widgets that can be used to lay out visual assets on a canvas. So we're going to be using this to create our own player HUD widget. To get started, we're going to look in our content browser to where we have the UI folder. Inside the UI folder, we're going to right click in here and then come to user interface and we're going to create a new widget blueprint. We're going to name this W for widget underscore player HUD. And let's double click on this to take our first look at creating a widget. So the first thing I want to point out is this hierarchy panel. This shows us all the different elements that make up our widget. And we can see that it only has one element in here. 
which is a canvas. And that's what we see here in the center window. This is our canvas. This is what we place assets into, and this is where we're going to arrange our player HUD. We can add assets to our canvas from the palette panel. There's many different elements we can use, but to start with, let's just drag in some simple text. So this is just some basic text, and you can see on the details panel that you'll find lots of different settings for customizing it, including the font size and the color. But the main thing to understand here is that you can customize the text that is displayed by editing the text content. After you've edited the text, once you hit enter, the text will be updated on the canvas. We'll begin to see how we can make our text more dynamic in the upcoming lessons by updating what is displayed from Blueprints. So that's the text, but what else do we have on the palette that will come in handy? Well, we can drag out an image. An image is an asset that we can use to assign images and textures. If we come back to our content browser under the UI folder, you'll notice that we have a textures folder here. Inside this folder, we'll find some textures that we can use for our images. For example, we have this marine portrait. To use this as an image in our widget, we can first select the image in the content browser, then inside the widget, we can look towards the appearance section. We can expand brush, and this is where we can assign images or textures. And because we have the marine portrait selected in the content browser, we can hit this little arrow here to assign it. Now we can click and drag and resize our images, but you might find that they end up stretching a little. But if we look back towards where we assigned our image, we can see the actual size of the image in pixels. So it has a uniform size of 200 by 200 pixels. This means that as long as we resize the X and Y to the same values, it won't stretch. And we can adjust the X and Y size values just above where we assigned our image. So for example, we can make our image smaller and not stretch by just setting it to 75 by 75. And we're free to move and place the image anywhere on the canvas. Okay, so that's how we can assign images. What else can we do that's relevant? Well, if we want to display a character's health bar, we can use a progress bar from the palette. We can see how a progress bar would work by adjusting the percent from the progress section when we have it selected. We'll eventually make some blueprint code that will read our player health and set this dynamically. Okay, so I think text blocks, images, and progress bars are really all we need right now. But there's one final thing I want to point out. When you have an asset selected, you will notice this kind of flower-like icon. This is an anchor point. Anchor points are used to make sure that the widget maintains its position across different screen sizes. I'm attaching a link to Unreal's documentation that goes into a lot of details, so make sure to check out the resources in your own time. But just as a quick rundown, the best advice I can give is just to set the anchor point to the closest corner that is near your asset. You can do this by dropping down the anchor dropdown in the details panel. But if your asset's closer to the center, then just set the anchor point to the center. This should give you the best results. Now, I want you to pause here and take some time to lay out your own HUD for the player. Make use of the text, images, and progress bars from the palette to lay out your player HUD. We're going to want to display a health bar for the character, but we also want to display a counter for how many aliens the player has killed. Now, you don't have to lay it out exactly how you see here. Add your own touch to it. Feel free to move assets around and use different colors or text. So pause here to set up your player widget, and then we'll take a look at how we can display it when we play the game. Okay, so this is how I'm going to lay out my HUD. I've got my marine portrait here in the top left, and I have a title for some text saying marine health, and I have the progress bar here. It's all colored green to represent health, and in the top right, I'm going to show the kills that the player has with a separate text block for the kill counter and just a title of kills underneath the image here. Okay, so this is all I'm going to do for now inside this widget. I'm gonna hit compile and save, and let's see how we can actually make this widget appear in the game. First, we're going to come to our character blueprint, and on begin play, we're going to drag out from begin play, we're going to type in create widget. We're going to create our player HUD widget, this will construct the widget, but it's not going to show us what the widget does until we drag out from the return value to make the widget appear by calling add to viewport. So that will add it to the player's viewport. And now if we hit compile, 
and save, we can come back to our level and hit play, and we see that the HUD spawns whenever we play the game now. We can also press F11 to go into full screen mode, so we can see more of the HUD here.